It's 2010, and there is time for D2. It's time to continue. It's the last time we murdered an old man and his plant wife, his plant computer wife. Now we're heading back on the snowmobile. We're heading back to Brenner Pharmaceuticals. Because we picked up something at the observatory. We picked up the flamethrower. Mercus. Mercus, what are you doing here? I, mean, how to sh I don't have any shotgun shells. Some machine gun is inadequate. There's green blood all over our face. Mercus wants to hit us with his hammer. Why do we have to fight enemies on the snowmobile? We shouldn't have to do that. I guess it would be bad if we didn't. Because we would just be underleveled and that f was the case. We passed something last time. We passed the frozen lake. Well, it's time to explore the frozen lake. It's not necessary to do so. It's completely optional. You can if you want. You can skip it if you want. All that's there are a few items. And some enemies. Lovely, lovely enemies. Get in our way. Those flyers kind of remind me of the cliff racers from Morrowind. Somehow there seems to be a similarity. If we go through that fence, We'll go into the, the frozen lake. Oh, what's this? What's this? Uh, we have no control on the lake. The snowmobile doesn't work well on ice and can barely control where we're going. Fortunately, when we're on the lake, there are no enemies. The enemies don't like the ice, I guess. They like the snow. Hate the ice. If we go to this little island right here, we find a gabomb. really would probably be easier just to walk around on the ice rather than use the snowmobile but if I leave it here I'll probably just forget where I left it so I guess we're taking it with us while we futilely attempt to steer the thing if we go on the snow banks to the sides we'll gain control back but then we have to fight enemies again one neat thing about the snowmobile is that you can make Lara wipe out on it. It's kind of difficult to do, actually. You have to drive straight at uh, an angle, uh, an incline that is too steep for the snowmobile to go on. And it'll fall over with Lara on it. It's just a little animation, but it's a nice touch. It's actually surprisingly difficult to do though. Usually the snowmobile will correct itself, but sometimes it'll happen. Oh, so many enemies. Why are there so many enemies? I feel like they're dancing. They're not really attacking me. Anyway, it can be useful to go into this frozen lake area because even though there's a whole lot of nothing in it, there are some grenades and some shotgun ammo which can be useful. And there is lack of control. So much lack of control. Uh, let's get off here because right here at the end of the lake are some items to pick up. It's kind of surprising that there's such a large area with basically nothing in it. Then again, maybe I shouldn't be so surprised because this is D2. Also, besides the items, there is one other thing to note here. If you walk in this direction, there's a spawning point for some animals. Not just any animals. And unfortunately, we can't use the flamethrower for hunting. That is not what it is for. 
Moose. It's the first time we saw a moose and is worth four meats. It looks pretty much exactly like a caribou. I don't know how you're supposed to tell them apart, but somehow you're supposed to. So yeah, if, if you shoot the ever-rare moose, you get four meats. So there are two rabbits worth of meats in a moose. And there are barely any in the game, actually. I mean, I guess if you wanted to get your hunting score up, you could just hang around here and keep shooting moose. Until you got the Moose Marksman Award. I don't really know why anyone would want to do that, though. There's no reward for actually getting those awards. There's no real point to doing it except personal preference. I guess if D2 was made today, that would be an achievement, wouldn't it? Those hunting achievements. You know, you, you shoot ten moose, you get an achievement, so we all have to do it. But back then, there were no achievements, so we didn't feel the need to actually, you know, do these pointless little quests. I killed another enemy. Are achievements a good thing? I don't know, they can be kind of fun. At the same time, without achievements, I really don't feel any kind of need to do these little side things. If their achievements were there, I probably would would kind of hang out and just shoot a bunch of moose just to get that achievement. I don't know if that's sad or what. That enemy to the right... It's pretty tough. Th that one. Because his weak point is in his mouth. But look at the shotgun. Kills him in two hits. And kills this guy in one. It's amazing how much more powerful the shotgun is than the submachine gun. But of course, I have limited ammo, so that's why I'm using the submachine gun. But anyway, here we are back at Brenner Pharmaceuticals. Like I said, we have that flamethrower now. And do you remember that frozen hatch? Oh, good. I can't actually walk through that path because the snowmobile is blocking the path. Let's get back on the snowmobile. Yes, there we go. Yeah, you remember that frozen hatch? Couldn't get in? Well, we can get in now. Because we're going to flamethrower that hatch. That Yes, that is what Laura thinks to do with the flamethrower. When confronted with legions of the plant zombie monsters, she does not think to use it. But we do have to get into that hatch, I suppose. So why not use it for this? Nothing new in Brenner Pharmaceuticals. Dead Cloneberly is still right there. Nothing new there. So let's go back to that hatch. And kind of wonder why there really isn't anything else in this pharmaceutical place. It's very small. But what mysteries could be lurking within the hatch? I guess we're about to find out. Laura does not mess around when it comes to unlocking. No door remains locked in the face of Laura's fury. She must have them unlocked. And she will grip a... what has to be a pretty piping hot piece of metal in order to unlock this door. She will not be denied. Gasp, it opened! I wasn't expecting that. Oh, an ominous staircase going down. I see no reason not to explore this. Maybe there'll be another Kimberly clone down here. They seem to be all over the place. Maybe we should get Kimberly back from the motel, or the shack, whatever it is. Just in case we need some help. I don't really know why Laura has to keep going off on her own. I mean, I guess it avoids cutscenes. We have some plants. What a surprise to find that here. What is this? What is this Laura says? What is this plant? We don't know what that is. What is that? I'll just leave it here. Can't possibly be of importance. Huh? What is that? I don't know. Hey, let's just ignore that. Probably Mandragora or something. There's science stuff on the wall. On that whiteboard, a lot of science stuff drawn down. I could see a drawing of a leaf. So let's look at that science stuff. 
But before we do that, there's shotgun shells. Yep. Leaving the shotgun shells there. Laura, Laura Potter. I am the Great Mother. You must awaken and take up arms again, my child. Prepare yourself with renewed strength and courage for the coming battle between all mankind and the Shadow. I command you in the name of the Great Mother. The giver of all life. Guardian of the Earth. Right, so there's that. Laura was freezing to death in the uh, the hatch at Brenner Pharmaceuticals because someone closed it on her. I guess those pants we saw look kind of familiar. Was that Kimberly? Was it another clone? We still don't know what the deal was with Kimberly killing uh, Cliff, and she didn't act any differently the next time we saw her. So what's the deal? What's going on with her? But anyway, that's how we end Disc 2, with Laura almost dead. And she ends up with another vision, and she... Well, I guess we're about to see what happens, aren't we? Because we're not stopping here, because that would be kind of 